Hello, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Balatash. I hope you had a very nice Thanksgiving break. I ate a lot of delicious food and I'm ready to start walking again. <laughs> okay, I wanna just, before we move on today, I want us to kind of review what we've done so far. So we set up two worm habitats. And these two worm habitats are a complete system, right? A system is a group of interrelated parts. And these systems contain all the parts of Earth's systems, the four spheres. It has the hydrosphere because we added a little water. It has the uh, geosphere because we added some rocks and sand and soil. It has the biosphere because it has some dead uh, leaves. It has paper which came from a tree. And it has the atmosphere because there's air inside and there's some holes on the top that allow air to go in and out. In addition, we also put some worms in here so that we could see what happens to the materials inside after the worms have been living there for a while. So we're going to just set them aside. We're going to continue letting that uh, ha things happen in those worm bins. Now we also planted some wheat seeds and I told you that you guys could uh, keep one in the sun and one in a dark closet. I put mine in a bag and here is my wheat seed now. My wheat seeds have germinated, they have grown, and this seed, these seeds because they have been in a transparent plastic bag are nice and green, right? And I have not had to add any more water because I have a complete system here, a group of interacting parts. So all the water that I put in here originally is trapped. And so I don't ever have to water it, just the water just stays inside. Now I had another uh, container and I had uh, some seeds and I put them in a black bag. And let's take a look and see what these look like. Hmm, so very pale, not very green at all, still growing, still looks pretty good, has still lots of good soil, a lot of water vapor inside, um, and we can see the roots in, the, uh, in there. All right, so I'm gonna put all these things back and we're gonna continue on for today. Okay, so fifth graders, we're gonna start talking about food chains. And it is a system of interrelated parts. A food chain consists of a couple of different parts. The first part is the part of the food chain that absorbs the sun's energy and turns the sun's, en sun's energy into matter. It takes the sun's energy and turns it into something that we can eat. And those things are called producers. Producers are all plants. Every plant makes its own food for the, through the process called photosynthesis. Photo means like light and we get light from the sun, right? And plants can use that light energy and turn it into food. It really is a miracle. So at the beginning of the food chain are producers, plants. The next thing that comes along are things that eat producers. And if you eat something else, you are called a consumer. Consumers. Consumers are things that eat plants and or animals. So if you are a consumer that eats only plants, you are a herbivore. So rabbits and horses and other organisms that eat only plants, they are herbivores. If you are a consumer that eats only other animals, you are a carnivore. Lions and tigers, things like that are carnivores. And if you eat both plants and animals, like me, you are an omnivore. 
Now at the end of the food chain are decomposers. And decomposers are organisms that eat dead plants and animals and recycle that matter and energy back into the earth system. So decomposers are worms, like the worms from our uh, worm habitat that we created. Bacteria and fungus, all kinds of things like that help to recycle dead plants and animals. So we're gonna look at a simple food chain for an owl. And the reason that we are picking an owl is because we are going to dissect owl pellets next week. So I wanna give you just a little introduction to the food chain of an owl. Okay, so every food chain begins with a producer. And in an owl food chain, one of the producers is field grass. Field grass is a plant and it captures energy from the sun. It uses water and carbon dioxide gas from the air to create food. It's kind of a miracle. And the food that it creates are little seeds. And then those seeds are eaten by a vole. Now, do you notice the arrow? The arrow goes from the grass to the vole. It's like this, I have an apple here. The I am going to eat the apple and the energy from the apple is going to go into me. Mm. So the energy from the apple goes from the apple to me. The energy from the grass goes from the grass to the vole. Now the vole, it is a consumer, right? It is eating the plant. It is a consumer. And because it only eats plants, it is a herbivore. Okay, now the vole is going to be eaten by the owl. I know I'm not the greatest artist. I'm doing the best I can. And you notice the arrow gums goes from the vole to the owl because the owl is going to eat the vole. So now the vole, in addition to being a consumer, it is also the prey of the apple, of the uh, owl. It is the owl's prey. So the vole is a consumer, it is a herbivore, but it is also the prey for this predator. This owl is a consumer, it is a carnivore and it is a predator. And in this food chain, the owl is the top of the food chain. It is the last rung on this food chain. It's the apex predator. There's another vocabulary word that I want you guys to learn. So we've talked about uh, consumers and producers, another way that we can categorize them is to call them autotrophs or heterotrophs. An autotroph is an organism that can make its own food. So troph is to feed and auto means automatic. You can make it on your own. So an autotroph is any plant that can make its own food. So producers are autotrophs. Heterotroph are all other organisms that cannot make their own food. So consumers are heterotrophs and they include herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. So heterotroph means that you eat other things and autotroph means that you can make your own food. Let's look at this really simple food chain for a minute. So the grass, the field grass, absorbs the energy from the sun and it takes in the water and the carbon dioxide, which is matter, and it creates food and that food then is passed on throughout the entire food chain that food provides 
matter, something like something that takes up space for the vole, it also provides energy so that that vole can live and grow. Then that energy from the vole goes into the owl. So the producer provides the energy and the matter for the entire food chain to exist on. Okay, fifth graders, please get out your science journal and turn to the front to the table of contents. And this is number 11, owl food chain. And mine is on page 18. So you're gonna put the page number that's in your science journal. And then please turn to page 18. Make sure to put the date at the top of the journal page. And then the title is Owl Food Chain. And I drew a picture of the owl food chain. And do you notice I made sure that the arrow went from the plant to the vole to the owl. And I also labeled some important things. I said that the plant was a producer and that it was also an autotroph, means that it makes its own food. It's another word for producer. I said that the vole was a consumer and that it also is a herbivore because it only eats the seeds from the plants. I said that the owl was a consumer and it's a carnivore and it is also an apex predator. It is the top of the food chain and it is the owl and the um, vole are both heterotrophs, meaning that they cannot make their own food. And then on the next page, I wrote a description of what was happening in the food chain. And I would like you to also include something like this. The food chain starts with the field grass, which is a producer. Producers make their own food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide gas. The vole eats the seeds from the grass. The energy from the plant is now in the vole. The vole is a consumer and a herbivore. The owl eats the vole. The energy from the plant went to the vole and is now in the owl. The owl is a consumer and a carnivore. The owl is the top of the food chain and is an apex predator. So please make sure that you write a complete summary of the food chain. Now, you should also write a question. Is there something that you still want to know about earth systems? Is there something you want to know about owls? Next week, we are going to be dissecting owl pellets and seeing what's inside. I'm looking forward to doing the owl pellets with you next week. Take care, guys.